Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for today, Monday, November 12th, 2012. And I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. All right, so we left off here uh, basically talking about this uh, woman who was fired over anti-Obama post. And uh, this article right here, CNN article bashes the growing number of people that question the mass media from November 5th, 2012. So we're talking about reporting on the popularity of conspiracy theories and of alternative news. It says in every case, the resulting article is not objective report on growing phenomenon, but an all-out hit piece bashing those who dare questioning the official story dictated by mass media with strong words and specific labels. And of course, they're trying to cover this all up. Um, whatever they're trying to cover up, they're doing a good job with this whole uh, Benghazi gate. It's just really getting out of hand, and I'm just so sick of hearing about it, to be honest with you. And now it's just going on and on and on and on. And right now, I mean, it's like I said last week, I'm covering news, like hard news, and I try to avoid that crap, those distractions like with Libya now betray us and stuff like that. Uh, because the world right now is a powder keg. It's the result of engineering of society and, and economies and, and political sovereign nations and puppet governments. And anything could happen right now. And yet they got everybody focused on stupid emails and about, uh, about what happened uh, in Libya when they were carrying out CIA operations to arm the, the, the terrorists that are out there killing um, uh, Syrian uh, ci uh, civilians and Syrian government officials trying to ward off these uh, terrorist attacks. So, you know, everybody's focusing on that. It should be focused on the fact that the UK is now spearheading a full on in, with troops, boots on the ground, of course, with CIA, SAS, and uh, Qatar and Gulf states backing um, uh, just a full invasion of sovereign nation to get a regime change. And they're arming terrorists to do this, and it's getting out of hand. That's why this recently they passed a new unity government uh, for these terrorists so they could have more representation in the government because they're the ones that are doing most of the work, not some peaceful activist opposition. But see, they don't want you to talk about that. In a recent article published on CNN entitled, Still Paranoid After All These Years, does a great job at equating all those who use critical thinking before guzzling down the toxic drink that is mass media with all kinds of crazy. The word paranoid is used about 10 times in the article as well as words panic, wingnut, lunatic, dupes, derangement, irrational, extremism, idiot, fearful, and insecurity. Another, another way the article places the label of crazy on people, uh, those who think outside of the TV box, is by mixing ridiculous theories with those that are more credible in order to lump them together and to discredit everything that is not the official story. They do that very well with, um, with uh, chemtrails and uh, UFOs and stuff like that, or harp or bluebeam. Yet another classic technique is associate those who seek the truth with racism, terrorism, and other scaryisms. A fourth way to discredit non-mainstream information is to equate those who write about alternative news and conspiracies as money-hungry crackpots. All these techniques are in this CNN article, so you can go in there and check it out. Uh, for time's sake, I have a lot to get to still, so check it out. Trend Forecaster, that just gives you the highlight, right? of uh, what's going on. Trend forecaster Gerald Salente sues Google to block his obscene imposter. So see, this is this is what they do. They, they went on there and they, they said here that they are letting bloggers use his image in vulgar postings using his website as well. Um, phrases like, wake the F up, along with Salente's image. Bloggers also use, allegedly put anti-Semitic, anti-Catholic, and anti-Islamist words in Salente's mouth, causing him uh, to fear for his own safety. Despite Google's policy against impersonation, Google has refused to deactivate the infringing blogs or to otherwise take action. Salente claimed in a court document that also names bloggers as defendants. Google de declined to comment Friday. So they're trying to neutralize them. Like I said before, they try to, to neuter people before the, you know, so that they don't, uh, any type of idea or truth that gets out there, they have to squeeze it. They have to manage the flow of information. I think in one instance, I was actually surprised that he held his uh, gold investments uh, not with hard gold, but the, with the company, and he lost it all. That was but uh, 108 Morris, 108, he made it on YouTube. Go check out his channel. He made a pretty good video. 
and he was talking about the Mossad is hiring. And basically, you could talk about anything. Uh, you can talk about um, even the stuff that truther movements are talking about, whether it's chemtrails or ending the Fed or or the Syrian uh, crisis about the CIA and the West, how they're operating, uh, running the terrorist guns and stuff. You could talk about any of that as long as you don't talk about Zionist Israel. As long as you don't talk about that, you're fine. And I think he has a pretty good point. Once you start using uh, talking about that, then they come for you. Economists cut U.S. fourth quarter growth forecasts. The forecasters are cutting their expectations for U.S. economic growth in the fourth quarter. And this, is, of course, is due to uh, the upcoming fiscal cliff. You're going to hear so much about that towards the end of this year and uh, next year. And like Stefan Maloney says, you know, just let it die. Just let, just let it go away and let us start again, start new with something. You know, people are going to try to latch on to this with the Federal Reserve, uh, you know, saying we could help you, we could help you, kind of like the IMF as you're being, you know, held at gunpoint. You need help. You need help. <laughs> Power firms gouging the public, paying more uh, for less electricity. So it's kind of like the um, after this last bubble where a lot of wealth is siphoned off, you saw all of the people that were going to retire in 2008 didn't retire, and they're still working. So a lot of people um, that are younger can't get into the workforce because they're still there. And uh, you have governments, including I think it was Australia or the U.K., one of them for sure was – basically saying we want uh, we want these people to work for their pensions while they're retired they want they want them to work for their retirement pensions they also want them uh, to basically work until like 80 years old or something basically work longer harder for last so electricity prices have skyrocketed despite consumers using less electricity while power companies have made bigger profits and this is all the name of co2 tax which they're pushing Actually, they have passed it in Australia, so it's making all the prices go up, and they know that. But it gets people used to it, like the gas pumps we saw in the last video. Gets them gets them used to rationing the sheeple that is, and they, they get used to it. As long as they feel like they're saving the planet, right? British gas hikes gas and power prices by 6%. British gas will raise its gas and electricity prices by an average of 6% from November 16th. So these are all indicators of uh, what's going on here. In the world economies, Spain to tackle mortgage reform following eviction-related suicides, says in the Basque region of Spain, residents of the town uh, Baracaldo held a vigil Friday to pay homage to a 53-year-old woman who jumped from a balcony to her death as she was about to be evicted. So it marked the second suicide in two weeks related to eviction in Spain. In Spain, is growing mass movement to put pressure on authorities to act. So yeah, I call them economic suicides. So. So uh, what they're going to do is they're going to stop evicting these people. Swiss Airlines plan to cut Athens and Madrid flight services, so it's that bad now. Switzerland's National Airlines says it plans to drop flights to Greece and Spain, citing the reason as the current flight services to these countries are unsustainable. Also, food stamps surged by most in one year to no all-time record in delayed release. Go in there and check out the chart. I'm going to keep moving, but uh, there it is right there. The biggest monthly increase in one year. Almost half of Britons want to exit the European Union, a poll shows. Almost half of Britons are expected to vote for the UK to leave the European Union if a referendum is hold, a new survey has found. Support for Greece's far-right Golden Dawn uh, swells amid wave of racial violence. So I'm just going to keep referring to it as tribalism. Um, you know, Europe was usually white, and they want it white again. Just like it's weird, you know, I never thought about it till today with the whole Obama thing. You know, whites still make up the majority of the population. The blacks make up 12%, and we have a black president. Kind of like, you know, so as far as representation, it's not really fair. Then you go to, you know, to, oh, we always had white, you know, because we always had white people. And, um, and then, like I said before, you know, Jews have what? They have 13% representation. That's a conservative number, if not 20 to 30% with all the lobbying and stuff like that and the power of APAC in Congress. So they have almost 12, they have 12 or 13% to 30% representation in Congress that makes decisions. And yet they make up less than 2% of the total population. So it says here, and that's the thing, that's what we were talking about just earlier. Anybody that wants, that has any kind of uh, criticism for the federal government is an extremist, a right-wing extremist. 
And if you have anything for Obama, or if you have anything about national sovereignty, you're a racist, especially if you start talking about Zionists. Greece's neo-Nazi Golden Party is gaining popularity in the midst of the country's deepening financial crisis. The group has been implicated in torture cases and for inciting a wave of racial violence sweeping the country. So, it says violence is getting wilder and wilder, and we still have the same pattern of attacks committed by groups of people in quite an organized way. So, you know, it wouldn't be like this if there wasn't such a far push away from what their traditional roots were. This is what I always like to, I want to state as a disclaimer. It's like, you only get these extremists because there's a there's a real sentiment of these beliefs. The only problem is is that <laughs> those people feel like they're not going to get it, so then they have to result to this, which is usually co-opted by the powers that be. Separatism is a word of the past, so European Council president deals a blow to the Scottish independence campaign and video. Huh? So Herman Van Rompuy, basically the leader of the undemocratic European Union, was asked on YouTube about Scottish nationalism. He told man from Edinburgh that the world must fight financial crisis together. It's all about integration. That's what it is. Propping up the petrodollar and integrating the European Union even further into a dictatorship. So he says that he would uh, chair discussions over independent Scotland joining the EU. Scottish nationalists last night were dealt a blow in a little seen video that emerged from the European Council president saying separatism is a word of the past and nobody has anything to gain from it. Then next up. Big Five group pushing for EU rapid reaction headquarters. The Lady Ashton EU foreign minister signaled to Paris she will go to the British opposition if France can win other allies this winter. They said they support comes ahead of a meeting. The foreign and defense ministers, the so-called Big Five group of France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Poland, and Paris next Wednesday to discuss driving the European defense forward. Some think that it would threaten the rival NATO command. So ooh, it's going to compete with NATO. So the French are pushing to beef up the EU military, backed by the UK Baroness. So the, the Baroness, Miss Ashton, has signaled to Paris that she will go against British opposition if France can win other allies this winter. And there's the same uh, uh, separatist or secessionist uh, sentiment across the pond here in North America. Rising number of states are seeing a one-party rule. In a little notice footnote to the elections, I wonder why, votes to fill legislative seats produced the highest number of states with one party rule in 60 years. Democrats and Republicans now have sole control of the governorship and both legislative chambers in 37 state capitals. The number of states divided got with divided government is down from 31 just 16 years ago to 12 today, prompting speculation about the country's evolving partisan uh, geography. And uh, it says here also, I think it's a reflection of a growing sorting out of our population where people live and our politics. So they we're talking about New England was actually almost incre almost all uh, basically Democrats. And of course, you, when you look at the popular vote map, you see from this past election, the whole South, a lot of the Midwest and Montana's, Dakotas were all red, conservative. It's only in the coast, man. Cater towards minorities. And uh, you have divided states of America, 20 states petitioned to secede. So, remember, the, you remember the Civil War was not about slavery. It was about not wanting to uh, take on debt in order to pay off the king for the lands that were bought from them. They didn't want to put their families and their futures in basically financial bondage. But, of course, they're going to make it into a race issue, right? After the re-election of President Obama, they want to succeed. So some sheeple are really having a difficult time facing the reality of a half-white, half-black president. To date, citizens of 18 states have petitioned the White House for consideration of a peaceful withdrawal from the United States. That's right. They don't, they're not going to allow them to peacefully withdraw, right? You know, if we were really free and democratic, they allowed them to let them go, right? Actually, I think there was a president. Uh, Ruther B. Hayes that actually was quoted as saying, just let them go to Abraham Lincoln. But Lincoln was quoted as saying, I'll do anything to preserve a union, whether slavery is abolished or not. My goal is to preserve the union, i.e. preserve the uh, the debt and tax structure. So here's a list of them. The top ones are Louisiana, Texas, Florida, Alabama, North Carolina, Kentucky, Mississippi, and Indiana. Then they water it down by saying, before anyone begins to cry treason... This is nothing more than an activist tactic, albeit a very dramatic one, attempting to garner government attention. So it says the no one is threatening to succeed or wage war against the United States. It's a petition, plain and simple. Well, maybe they should start to, you know? 
or something else. This is GGN. Thank you.